recording. So when we say percentile rank, it is typically defined as a proportion of scores and distribution that a specific score is greater than or equal to for instance, if you receive, like for example, you have a score of 95, at yung 95 mo ay meron percentile rank na 88, that means uh, your percentile rank is 88 and 88% of those who took the same test with you has a score lower than you. Okay, lower than or equal to your score. Okay, yun po yung ibig sabihin nun. Kunwari, ang score mo ay uh, sa 15 item quiz ay 10. At sa 10 ay nasa 50th percentile. Ibig sabihin, 50% of your classmates, mas mababa ang score sa'yo. Okay, mas mababa or equal yung score sa'yo. Then the other 50 has a higher or greater or equal score to you. So, yun po yung ibig sabihin nun. Okay? So, pag percentile rank po, ang ginagawa natin is we are relating a certain data, a score, to the other scores. So, may nang pusa ko eh. Malis ka mo na. Ay, ako na. Yan. So, let's proceed. <clears throat> so, to compute for the ungrouped data, all we have to do is to substitute the values dito sa formula na percentile rank of X. X stands for the raw score. That is given, like for example, dito, binigay sa atin 95. So, yan yung x natin or yung value of x. Now, that is equal to the number of values below, below ng 95 divided by the total number of frequencies or total number of data that we have, multiplying it to 100. So, dito makikita nyo, kinocompute natin yung percentage ng mga data na mas mababa dun sa ating raw score. Example. So, we have here a job description, uh, not a job description, but a job and their estimated monthly salary. This is from Dolly and it is collected or should I say, <clears throat> the data is collected in the year 2019. And we are going to solve for the percentile rank of computer engineers. So, pagwabasihan natin yung percentile rank niya dun sa salary na meron. Ano ba yung salary ng computer engineers? Ang salary po nila ay 49,335. Yung estimated monthly salary nila. Ngayon, ang kukumpute natin po ay yung percentile rank niyan. And for us to compute that, all we have to do is to count the number of salaries na mas mababa dun sa 49,335. So alin po dyan yung mas mababa? Ito po yung tatlo. One, two, three. Yung salary ng accountant and auditors, yung production supervisors and foremen, and ganun din po yung statistician. So yung tatlong yan, may mas mababang sweldo than the computer engineers. So, na gagawin natin, all we have to do is to substitute in to the number of values below X. So, yung kinukuha natin na PR is the percentile rank of computer engineers' salary. Then, yung number of values below the salary ng computer engineer is 3 divided by 10 because there are 10 jobs listed. Then we will multiply that to 100, then we will get 30. Meaning 30% 30 of the job that is listed 
has a lower salary than the computer engineer. Then, kung 30 yan, what makes it 100? So, meron tayong 70. Yung 70 na yon, 70% of the job listed in the table given has a higher salary greater or equal to the computer engineer's salary. Okay? So, ganun lang po kadali pag any group. How about this example? We have to find how many percent of the jobs has monthly salaries lower than 60,477. So, 60,477, kung makikita nyo, yun ay sweldo ng actuary. Kung bibilangin natin, or kukumpute natin yung personal rank ng mga uh, job that is lower than this salary. Meron tayong computer programmers up to statistician. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. So, may mas mababang sweldo dito sa 60,477. Substitute lang ulit natin siya. 6 divided by 10 times 100, that is 60%. Ibig sabihin, yung um, jobs that has monthly salary lower than 60,477 is equal to the 60%. Or should I say 60 at percentile? Okay. So, therefore, 60% of the jobs have monthly salaries of 60,477 or less, and 40% of the jobs has monthly salaries of 60,477 or more. Okay? So, ganun lang po kapag ungroup. When we say ungroup, they are not organized, they are not classified, they are not grouped. Di tulad kapag group data, iba na po yung formula natin. Okay? Now, kung group data na po yan, ito na po yung formula. At kapag ganyan po yung formula, ibig sabihin may lower boundary ka, meron kang frequency, may CF, ibig sabihin meron kang class na kailangan ni identify <laughs> So, later on, papakita ko sa inyo how to identify that class. Okay? Next. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng mga symbols dyan? PR stands for the percentile rank. And the answer will be a percentage. P stands for the raw score or value which one wants to find the percentile rank. LB means the lower boundary of the percentile class. And N stands for the total number of frequencies. Yung CF po, alam nyo na yan, cumulative frequency, na mas mababa dun sa CF ng class. Okay? And yung F natin, yung frequency ng percentile class. And yung I, you already know this, that I is the class size or the class interval. So let's try answering. We have here a frequency distribution table. We have to find the how many percent of the scores are greater than the cumulative frequency of 38. So dito ang binigay sa atin, not a row score, or should I say um, cumulative frequency ang, ang pinapahanap sa atin, ano? yung cumulative frequency na 38. Pero ayoko tong example na to. Let's proceed to 4. Tayo sa 4 yan. Kasi mas ano to eh. Mas realistic. Using the, first, the previous table, if one of the students got a score of 42, what is her percentile rank? So kapag nakakuha ka ng 42, kunwari ikaw yung student, out of the 50 students that we have here, ano kaya yung percentile rank mo? Now, para makuha nyo po 
yung class, kung saan siya included, ang kailangan nyo lang pong gawin ay tingnan yung mga scores. Okay? At hanapin sa ang class included si 42. So sa tingin nyo, looking at the scores, saan po kaya included 45. si 42? He want to 45. Opo, of course, it is included in 41 to 45. Wait lang, mag-aano tita ko. So, yun tayo sa 41 to 45. Ibig sabihin, ito yung mga values na titignan natin to get the lower boundary, the CF, and so on. So, again, ano nga yung formula natin? Yung formula po natin ay, yan kung natatandaan nyo. Hindi na natandaan. <laughs> So, formula po natin ay PR is equal to 100 divided by N. Then, yung multiply natin yan. Percent. So, ano? P, P minus N. Minus the lower boundary. Boundary. Times the frequency. Time. Divided by Divided by ano? Interval. Interval plus the CF below of the percentile. Or the CF below the percentile. Okay? So, ano na yung mga values na kailangan natin? Siyempre, kailangan natin yung N. Kailangan natin yung P. Ang P natin ay 42. Alam na yan kasi given na. Ang lower boundary natin, kunin din natin. Yung frequency, yung I, at yung CF below the percentile class. Okay. So, N natin, you already know that. That is 50. Lower boundary natin, if this is your class, the lower boundary, subtract lang tayo ng 0.5 kay 41. 40.5. 40.5, correct. Then the frequency is 8. And then, yung I natin, bilangin ninyo what five. is the class size. Five. That is five. And yung CF natin below. Thirty-eight. This is your CF, yung mas mababa sa kanya, which is thirty-eight. Okay? So, that's one hundred divided by fifty. Multiply natin siya to the quantity of the raw score. And as the lower boundary times the frequency, which is 8, divided by the I, which is 5, plus the CF, which is 38. So this is 2. Then we have 42 minus 40.5. 1.54. 1.5 times 8. 12. 12. Divided by 5 plus 30. Yeah. We have 1.5. 1.4. 1.5 times 8. Divided by 40.4. Okay. The answer is 40.4. Then we have 2 times 40.4 is... 80.8. 80.8, correct. Or, you can say that the PR is 81%. Okay? So, you can say that 81% of the class got a score lower than the student na nakakuha ng 42. Lower than or equal. Kasi hindi natin um, hindi natin masasabi na walang nakakuha ng equal score sa kanya. So that's lower than or equal to 42. So 81% of 
of the students that a lower than or equal 40 minus 4. Then how about those who got higher scores? Ilang percentage kaya? 19%. 19%. Higher or equal to? Greater than or equal to? Okay? So, parang ganda yan eh. So let me clear all the drawings. Then. Round up the resulting value to the nearest whole number. Therefore, the percentile rank of the student who got 42 is 81 percent or 8, okay, 81 percent. And that's it. Try natin maghanap ng iba pa. Okay, what if hindi ka nakapag-review and you got a score na mababa? Let's say, ang score mo ay 33. Okay, sabihin natin na yung score mo ay 33. So let's say na ang score mo ay 33. Now, if your score is 33, which class do you belong? 31 to 35. 31 to 35. Ibig sabihin, dito manggagaling lahat ng values. Okay? So let us have N. N is 50. I is 5. Now what will be our lower boundary? Ang raw score natin ay 33. Ang frequency natin, what will be our frequency and the cumulative frequency? Lower boundary is? 30.5. 30.5. The frequency is? 9. And the cumulative frequency below? 18. Next, substitute natin siya. The formula? Mom. Uh, PR equals 100 divided by N. Sulat ko lang ulit. We have P minus the lower boundary times the frequency divided by I plus the cumulative frequency below the percentile rank. So we have 100 divided by 50, which is 2. Pag kayo na nagsasolve, pwede nyo shortcut na. Basta hindi kayo malilito. Pinapakita ko lang para sa mga baka kasi na hindi makasunod pag dinaretso natin. Okay. Plus the CF, which is 80. So this is 2 times the quantity of 33 minus 30.5. 2.5. 2.5. Multiply natin siya sa 9. Divide by 5. Plus 18. Ay, naku. Pusang gala. Mayas ko dyan. So, what is 2.5 times 9 divided by 5? Plus 18. 22.5 po. That is 22.5 times 2. 40. 40. 45. 45. 45. 45. So our PR, sakto 45 percent. Ibig sabihin nito, 45 percent of the students have a score lower than or equal to 33 and uh, of course 67 percent has a score greater than or equal to 30. 
po yung ibig sabihin nito. Later on, susunod na na module, ang topic ay uh, how to interpret the percentile, the decile, the different percentile rank. Kaya sinasabi ko na sa inyo kung ano yung paano natin iintindihan na ano ba yung ibig sabihin nitong mga to. Okay? Let me clear all the drawings and then we will proceed to the next module. So, ganun lang po, no? Yung, ang difference lang nila, of course, yung formula. Para lang din siyang pagsasolve ng ano, no? Media, ng, ng decimal, percentile, quartile. So, pero wag kayo basta ng formula, of course. Pero meron din CF, meron din lower boundary, meron din class. <coughs> Kailangan na lang. Okay, next. You are going to interpret the measures of position. Review tayo ng measures of position. Ano-ano ba yung mga yun? We have the quartile, kung saan yung data ay inahati natin into four equal parts. Sabi nga, it is a three uh, score point na nagdi-divide into, into four equal parts. Okay, yung three score points na yun is what we call the first quartile or the lower quartile. The second quartile or what we consider as the median. And the upper quartile, which we consider as the Q sub 3. Okay? And 25% of the data falls in the first quartile. Natin. 50% falls below the second quartile. And 75% falls below the third quartile. Okay? So, ito po yung illustration niya. Paano natin i-interpret yung measures of position? Siyempre, makikita nyo, meron kayong given na data. Tatanungin sa inyo, anong quartile ba to? Anong value ng quartile na to? Anong data that falls to this quartile, first quartile, second and third, and so on. So, paano natin siya i-interpret? Let me give you an example. Sabi, Anna says that the mathematics test is so difficult. Ngayon, meron silang 200 na test takers. Kasama siya doon. And her score is 15 out of 20. Her score belongs to the first score type. So, paano natin i-interpret yan? Una, yung 15 out of 20, alamin niyo muna, no? Mataas ba yung score niya? Ilang percent ba yung nasagutan niya ng tama? Kung 15 yung score niya, ibig sabihin, ilang percent yung 15 out of 20? So, kung ang kukunin niyo is yung percentage niya, all you have to do is to divide 20, ah, 15. Si 15, i-divide niyo sa 20. And you'll get 0 0.75. Meaning, that is 75% of 20. 15 divided by 20. Kaya nga, di ba? 15 over 20 pag nagsusulat tayo ng score. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin ng over? Over means divide. So, 15 over 20 is also, is also the same with 15 divided by 20. Ibig sabihin, Yung 15 divided by 20, 0.75 or 75% ng exam na sagutan ng tama. And kapag tayo nagkakaroon ng quizzes, na sa grade, even sa grade, no, sa mga worksheets, yeah. sa grade, di ba, para makapasa kayo, you have to get 75. Okay, para makapasa sa scores, ano din, ano, you also need to get 75% of your, your correct answers para masabi na, basta napasa mo yung quiz. Okay? Minsan, di 
depende rin yan sa feature and blood health. Ang pinagkila lang ay 60%, pero mostly 75%. So kung 75% yung score ni Ana, let's say, nakapasa siya. Okay? And pangalawa, tingnan natin, nasaan yung position ng score niya? Ang sabi yung position ng score niya ay nasa first quartile. Ibig sabihin, yung score ni Ana falls dun sa first quartile. And anong ibig sabihin? Kung ang score ni Ana ay nasa first quartile, ibig sabihin, 25% of the students have a score lower than Ana. And come to think of it, Ana passed the exam. So what can you say about the scenario? Uh, Anna's score falls at the first quartile. And then that means 25% of the students have a score lower than Anna. Ngayon, kung nakapasa si Anna, anong masasabi niyo sa scenario? Madali ba yung exam or mahirap? po yung way on how to analyze the scenario para ma-interpret natin yung measures of position. Ano po? Mahirap. Mahirap? Bakit mahirap? Nahirapan daw si Anne eh. Dahil ba sinabi niya na nahirapan siya? Tatanggapin na natin. Remember that in math, you have to prove na tama yung statement. Paano mapag-prove na tama yung statement? Siyempre, you have to gather data. At yung data na nakuha natin na yung score nga ni Ana ay 15 out of 20. Nakapasa siya. At yung score niya ay nasa first quartile. Mahirap po rin po. Kasi 25% lang yung pumasa eh. 25% lang? Alam nyo ba na yung... Ah, parang hindi niya, niya ata ang nag-get yung 25%. Okay? Ay, ang ganda naman ang sulat ko. Pasensya nyo na tumabing eh. Yan, kunyari yan yung data natin, no? So, this is the half. So this is your Q sub 1, this is your Q sub 2, this is your Q sub 3. Ito, yung pinag-uusapan natin na 25%. Yung score ni Ana falls dun sa Q sub 1, which is 15 out of 20, or 75%. Pasado yan. Okay? So, kung si Ana, 25% ng score, uh, nasa, kumbaga nasa 25% yung score niya na mas mataas din sa other na nandito, na mas mababa ang score sa kanya. Kumbaga nasa first quartile yung score niya. How about yung nandito? Sa tingin nyo, ano na yung mga score nila? Mas matataas. Mas matataas. Ibig sabihin po, kung 25% to, yung remaining na 75% has a score higher than Ana. So, let's say, ang score nila ay 16 to 20. Out of 20, ha? Yan yung score nila. O, ngayon, sagutin nyo ulit yung tanong. Difficult ba yung, yung exam nila sa math? Hindi po. 
Not. Hindi po. Definitely not. Kasi, konti lang ang hindi pumasa and the majority of the class passed the exam. Kami nga eh, sa, sa school, pag nakakuha kami ng 50% ng students nakapasa, alam nyo, masaya na kami. No? Kasi, that, that is a huge number. That is a huge percentage. Lalo na, kung 75% of your class pass the exam, the test, di ba, mas masaya yun. No? And we barely make it to 50. Yan ay kung ang mga student ay hetero. Karamihan kasi sa sections natin ay hetero. So, kapag naka 50% ka na, ang saya na nun. Parang sa ano, di ba kahapon nagbigay ng grades? <clears throat> Ilan yung nag-honor sa inyo? Nabanggit ba sa inyo ilan yung honor nyo? Oh, let's say, ang nag-honor sa inyo ay 22. Out of 53 na lang yata kayo. Let's say 22 out of 53. Ang saya na natin nun kasi ang dami. Ang dami ng student na nakapasa. Okay. 42% ng sudyante nakapasa. Or I should I say, 42 students nag-honor. Ibig sabihin, yung average nila for third quarter ay mas mataas sa 90. No? Ibig sabihin, uh, 42% ng sudyante nag-exert ng extra effort para magkaroon ng excellence award. Academic Excellence Award. So, nakakatuwa, no? Kung maraming nakapasa, maraming nag-honor. So, ganyan po natin titignan, i-interpret, i-analyze yung scenario para mas maintindihan ninyo yung posisyon ng, 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 ng data. Kasi kung iisipin lang natin na 25, para sa atin, 25% is big enough. Pero kung titingnan ninyo sa illustration, mas malaki pa rin yung nakapasa na 75%. Ibig sabihin, the exam is not difficult. Naintindihan po ito? Dito ang ginawa niya, hindi siya nag-illustrate, no? Di tulad natin. Pero ang ginawa niya, nagkaroon siya ng mga guide questions. What percentage of tests did Anna answer correctly? If the passing was 75%, would she have passed the test? So una, ano daw po muna yung percentage ng uh, nasagot pa ni Anna ng tama? Nakita natin kanina that that is 15 out of 20 or 75%. And kung ang passing score is 75%, nakapasa ba siya? Of course, 75% yes. yung kanyang um, correctly, uh, answered correctly, questions that she answered correctly, and nakapasa po siya. Correct. Number two, if the passing was 75%, About what percentage of test takers passed the test? About what percentage of test takers failed the test? Alam na natin yan, no? That 25% passed the test. Kasi tinignan natin kanina sa diagram. 25% lang ang uh, mas mababa yung score. Okay? Then, did the majority of the class pass or fail? Majority passed. And was it difficult? Of course, it is not difficult. Kasi 75% of the population or the number of students have passed the exam or the test. 
Okay. Now let us have second scenario. Your best friend who is 15 years old, year old, grade 10 student, believed that she is generally young for her grade level. Upon gathering of data, it has been found out that the first quartile is 16 years old. So, first quartile, ulit. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun? First quartile? Sabihin? Ito yung data mo? Ito yung half? Ito yung one four. So this is your piece of one. Ni-illustrate ko lang para mas makita nyo, ha? Pero I think pag na sanay na kayo sa pag-interpret ng measures of position, kahit hindi na kayo mag-ganito, kaya nyo na. So 15 years old, no? In grade 10 student na siya. And sabi niya, generally young daw siya for her grade level. Now, we gather the data and we found out that the first quartile is 16 years old. So if this is 16 years old, at siya ay 15, ibig sabihin belong siya dito sa first 25. Sa, I mean, dito sa 25 first. Yung friend mo na 15 years old. Kung 16 yung first quartile, sa so tingin ninyo ano yung edad ng mga to? 75%. 16 about. Okay. Pwedeng 16 and above. Hindi natin alam kung hanggang ilan yung edad niyan. Ito kasi, let's say na 16 and below. Below to 16. Below to 16. Parang baligtad yung ano ko. Dapat 16 and below. Okay. Now, bakit ini-include natin si 16? Remember kasi kapag may data tayo, mare, ah, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. Tapos ito yung first quartile. So may 16 ka pa rin para dun sa susunod na quartile. Diba? Naalala nyo yun no, kapag may naungulit. Kaya hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na 17 siya, tapos ito 15 lang ang ganyan. Okay, kaya ini-include natin sa 16. Now, ibig sabihin kung majority, majority, which is 75%, ay may edad na 16 and above. Sa so, tingin nyo, tama ba yung sinasabi niya na generally young siya for her grade level? Yes. Yes. Bata siya para sa grade level niya. Bakit? Kasi karamihan sa kanila nasa 16 and above na yung yung ano yung edad. And siya 15 pa lang. So siguro advance siya uh, mas maaga siya pumasok sa school. So on, natin alam no. And uh, maniniwala tayo sa sinasabi niya kasi base sa data, nakikita nyo na majority of the class are 16 and above. Okay? Tingnan natin kung paano niya nasagot yung question, no? Or yung scenario na identify kung siya ba ay generally young or not. What percentage of the students have ages 16 and below? 25%. Tama? What percentage of the students have ages 16 and above? 75%, correct? So, maniniwala ba tayo sa sinasabi niya? Yes. The majority has 16 and above na age. Now, how about for decile? Pag decile, nakikita nyo, di ba meron tayong D sub 1, D sub 2, D sub 3, and so on. So, si D sub 1, ang, ang value niya is the 10% of the data, D sub 2, 20% of the data, D sub 3, 30%, and so on up to D sub 9, that is 90% of your data. So, tawag natin sa kanya, decile, 
because we are dividing the data into 24 parts. Okay? And ang tawag nga natin sa kanya ay uh, nine score points. So there are nine score points that divides the data into 10 score points. Okay? So ano naman yung example natin dito? <clears throat> Mrs. Labonete gave a test to her students in statistics. The students finished. The students finished their test in 35 minutes. This to this time is 2.5 decile of the allotted time. What does this mean? Hey. So, 35 minutes and yung time na yan, ito, ito yung binabanggit niya, ay 2.5 decile. Ano yung ibig sabihin? No? 20%. Ay, sumobra ko saan. Ano po? 20%. 20% ba pag 2.5? 25% po. Okay, correct. That's 25%. Pansin ko lang yung paghati ko, ha? Ay pag-growing. So, let's say this is 50%. This is 25. This is 75. So, ito yung B sub 2.5. Ito yung B sub 5. Ito si B sub 7.5. <coughs> And yung 2.5 decel natin ay 35 minutes. <coughs> okay. Ito ay time. Okay. Malinaw na ang tinitingnan natin dito ay time. Now, ang sabi, the students finish their test 35 minutes. So, natapos nila, no? Lahat sila. Students finished. Mahirap. Their test. And yung allotted time, isipin nyo, ito yung allotted time, itong buong to. Pero dito pa lang natapos na nila. Madali. Madali. Okay. Ito yung time. Buo siya. Pero napansin ng teacher, upon looking at the time they finished their exam, they finished it 35 minutes and that is 2.5 decile. Ibig sabihin, Kung ganito kalaki yung time na allotted mo, allotted time mo, at ito pa lang, natapos na nila, anong ibig sabihin nun? Mahirap o madali? Madali lang. Madali lang. Ibig sabihin nun, alam nila, it is a good uh, sign na yung sudyante alam nila yung isasagot nila, nakapag-review sila, nakapag-ready sila, at natuto talaga sila. Okay? Tignan natin, no? This means that 25% of the learners Anong 25% of the learners? Malito ha, huwag niyong ano, pansinin yung una. This means that the learners finish the test in 35 minutes or less. Ibig sabihin, hindi 25% of the learners ha, ano yung nakalagay dyan? Should be um, the learners finish the test 35 minutes or less. A low quartile ng time 
time yung pinag-uusapan natin dun sa mga quartile na yun. A low quartile is considered good because it means that student finished the test in a short period of time. Huwag yung pansinin yung 25% of the loans. Scenario 4. Anthony is a secretary in one big company in Metro Manila. His salary is in seventh decile. Should Anthony be glad about his salary or not? Kung kayo si Anthony, magiging masaya ba kayo? Yes po. Bakit? Kasi po, 70% po ng big company yung ano, magiging salary ko po. Ibig sabihin niya, 70% daw ng employee dun sa big company na yan. And when we say big, ibig sabihin marami ang empleyado. 70% nun ay uh, mas mababa ang salary sa'yo. Mas mababa or equal yung salary sa'yo. Then 30% lang ang pwedeng kasing, uh, kasing laki ng soldo mo or mas mataas pa. Okay, so si Anthony dapat maging masaya na siya doon on sa 7th decile. So the 70% of the employees receive a salary that is less than or equal to his salary. And 30% of the employees receive a salary that is greater than his salary. Anthony should be pleased with his salary. 7th uh, decile, which marks the boundary between 70 and 30 percent of the data. Ibig sabihin ko merong 200 employees, ang dami nun, no? Parang sa school, yung teachers sa school ay 200 plus. So kung merong 200 employees, approximately 60, yung nakakatanggap ng salary na mas mataas kay Anthony. And yung 140 or 139, mas mababa sa kanya or equal sa sweldo niya. So okay yun. How about for the percentile? It is a 99 score point that divides the data into 100 equal parts. Okay, so mapapansin nyo dyan, meron tayong value na 1%, 2%, up to the 99%. Okay. So, nandito yan si sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, P sub 10. So, 11, 12, 14, at 20, so on. <clears throat> ano naman yung binigay dito na, ano, na scenario? In a group of 20, you and some grade 10 students are ranked according to height. And you are the 80th percentile. How many students are taller than you? Granting nobody is as tall as How many is taller than you down? Kung ikaw ay nasa 80th percentile. Ano daw? 20%. Ah, 20%. And yung mas mababa sa'yo? 80%. Okay. Next. 6, 25 scores in a mathematics test were recorded and 79 was the 50th percentile. Okay. Only one student got a score of 79. So what can you say about this? How many students score higher than 79? Nasa 50th percentile daw ang 79. How many of the students? 25 new students. And we got an, the information that 75 was the 50th. Kung isa lang yung estudyante na naka-79, uh, ilan daw yung mga estudyante na, ano, na may score na higher than 79? Kung siya yung 50th percentile. Ilan po? 
Out of 25, isa po ay nakakuha ng 79. Ilan po kaya yung may mataas na score? 79 at mas mababa. Kung siya ay nasa 50th percentile. Ano ba yung may sabihin ng 50th percentile? Tag 12 po. Ano po? 12 po yung sa nakakuha ng higher than 79 and sa lower po 12 din. Kasi po isa lang po yung nakakuha ng 79%. So, equivalent lang po yun din. Kung titignan ninyo pag in-arrange natin to na uh, ascending order, may kita nyo na nasa 50th percentile siya kasi nasa gitna siya. Nasa gitna si 79 at isa lang naman siya pag 25 yung students or yung 25 yung scores na pinag-uusapan natin. Siya yung nasa gitna. Well, but yung nasa um, lower scores or got the lower scores than 79, and 12 got the higher scores. So there were 12 students who got higher than 79, and there are 12 students who got lower than 79. So ganun lang po kadali no on how to analyze, understand, and interpret the measures of position. Okay. Let's now have module number 12. Module number 12 ay mga correction lang, no? Na kailangan natin i-address later. So what does a percentile rank mean? Ano na? As the name suggests, a measure of position is a number that tells where the score stands relative to the other in the set of RAM data. Ibig sabihin ng statement na yun. Ibig sabihin, um, you are relating the score to the other data in a RAM data. Okay, na-arrange mo. I mean, um, in-interpret natin siya, na-relate natin itong data na to, comparing it to the other data or relating it to the other data. And as you can see, ito po yung um, result ng National Career Assessment Examination or NTI ni Zika. May kita niyo sa scientific ability, the standard score ay 460.50. Sa reading comprehension, 670.68. Sa verbal ability, 726.57. And sa mathematical ability, we have 591.7. At yung percentile rank niya is also given. Sa scientific ability, we have 48. Sa reading comprehension, we have 94. Sa verbal ability, we have 99. And sa mathematical ability, we have 56. At yung overall GSA niya, 612.37. And the percentile rank is 84. When we say overall GSA, general scholastic aptitude niya. Okay? What does a percentile rank mean if the percentile rank of Gino's score is in scientific ability is 48? Does this mean that he scored 48% of the total items in the test correctly? So, Doon muna tayo sa, ano, sa question niya. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng percentile rank? When we say percentile rank, you are relating your score, a specific score, to the other score in that data, in the given data. Okay? Now, kung percentile rank po niya ay 48, ano daw ba yung ibig sabihin nun? Tinanong nga tayo eh. Ibig sabihin ba nun, 48% ng test um, question, sasagot niya ng tama? Hindi po. Again, ang percentile rank po, nire-relate natin yung score natin sa iba. Nire-relate natin yung certain data sa iba pang data. Okay? So, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na dahil 48 yan, 48% din ng exam yung nasagot mo ng tama. Di ba nakatanggap din kayo ng NK? Ay, ewan ko kung natanggap nyo na sa inyo, no? Pero may makikita rin kayo doon. Ako dati nung naalala ko, hindi ko alam ibig sabihin nung mga yun. No? Ano ba ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin, ito yung nasagutan ko ng tama. Yun din yung, yun din yung perception ko before. Pero that's 
that's wrong. Ibig sabihin, nare-relate lang yung score mo sa iba pa. Okay? Then, ang um, ibig sabihin lang po niyan ay 48% ng mga sudyante na taasan niya yung score. Okay? Kung million yung sudyante, kunwari, or should I say, kunwari, 100 yung sudyante, 48 doon na taasan niya yung score. Okay? Yun po yung ibig sabihin na 48%. Ito pala yung pinipindot ko. Sagot na ba natin yan? How about, when we say percentile, alam na alam nyo na yan, it's a 99 score point. And let's see kung ano yung question niya dito. No? Percentile rank are particularly useful in relating individual scores. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. To their possessions in the entire group. A percentile rank is typically defined as a proportion of scores in a distribution that a specific score is greater than or equal. So, kung ito yung, um, kung meron tayong 100 na sudyante, asan yung ano mo doon, ranking mo doon? Okay? Ilan yung nataasan mo at ilan yung mas mataas yung score sa'yo? So, doon sa, sa part na yun, mas maiintindihan yung ano yung ibig sabihin ng percentile rank. And um, may mga factors din na pwede maka-apekto dito. No? Like for example, ang um, taas ng mga scores. Kunwari, ang tataas ng scores nyo lahat. Kunwari, yung mga score nyo ay 15 to 20 lahat. Pero, kunwari, ako ang score ko ay 17. Pero ako ay nasa P sub 2. Ibig sabihin... Isa lang, or should I say 2% of the students has a score lower than me. E 17 out of 20 na ako. Ibig sabihin, matataas yung score namin lahat. So parang nilarank mo lang yung sarili mo according dun sa scores na meron kayo in a group. No? So hindi mo naman pwedeng i-relate yung score mo dun sa score ng iba na hindi nag-take ng same test. So, ito, kada, uh, ito ay mga nag-take ng same test, same exam, same quizzes, and saka ka mag-relate ng individual scores. Next, let us have now the example. What is the percentile rank of Gino score in verbal ability? So, kung makikita nyo, ang kanyang percentile rank ay 99. At yung kanyang um, score is 726.57. Now, ano ba yung ibig sabihin doon? Kung meron daw 1.3 million students who took the NCAI, sa so tingin ninyo, um, ilan sa kanila yung merong verbal ability score na mas mababa kaysa kay Gino? Kasi kung maaalala nyo, yung, yung verbal ability ni Gino, yung personal rank is 99%. So, ilan po yung mas mababa? So, para malaman natin, all we have to do is to simply get the 99% of the data. Okay? So, yung 99% po ng 1.3 million is 1 million 287,000. Ibig sabihin, yung score ng mga to ay mas mababa sa kung ano yung score ni Gino. Okay? Ano pa? How many naman daw have the same or higher verbal ability than Gino? So, kung meron tayong 1.3 million, ibawas lang po natin sa 1.287 million. Then, we got 13,000. Okay? Ganun lang po kadali yung uh, solving, in, solving problems involving measures of position. Thus, we can say that 13,000 of the students have the same or higher verbal ability for than Gino's score. So, paano naman pagka-group data? 
Dito kasi may problem dito, may mali sa solution, no? Makikita nyo, uh, nasaan daw included si 25,000 within 23,000 to 25,999. Pero dito, yung pinax niya, iba. Pero kung dating sa kapila, ayun na. Doon niya na naba kasi kung natin na marinang placement. At dito po, hindi tayo magpa-plus, okay? And then now, ko lang to, this should be multiplication. Okay? Mali lang sa solution. Dapat multiplication po yan. Intindihan po, di ba kanina yung ginawa natin, nag-multiply tayo sa percentile lang? Ganon din po, dapat dito. Kasi percentile lang ang sinusok. So it should be 100 divided by n times the quantity of E minus LP times the frequency divided by I plus the competitive frequency below the percent alpha. Okay. And so, parang ako kung tama yung ginawa niya. Oh, ito naman, D sub 4. Maalala nyo, the formula sa D sub 4, D sub 4 is equal to the lower boundary times K times N divided by 10, kasi 10 equal parts yan. Minus competitive frequency below, divided by frequency times I. Substitute ka lang yan, then you got 3.83 or 4. Number of times a person eats without, eats out in a week. So kaya siya nag, nag round off to the whole number kasi wala, hindi ka naman kakain ng 3.83 na times kakain ka full number dapat. So that's four times. So yung D sub 4 natin, ibig sabihin nun, 40% ng mga tao ay kumakain four times a day. Ano kaya yung ibig sabihin nun kung ano, 40% ng mga tao kumakain ng four times a day? sabihin uh, malaki-laki rin yung populasyon na hindi ko makain ng apat na beses. No? Pag sinabi natin apat na beses, may almosal, may tanghalian, may merienda, ano pa, at may hapunan. So, ibig sabihin na um, hindi karamihan ng mga Pilipino ay kumakain ng apat hanggang mas mataas pa sa apat sa isang araw. Kasi D sub 4, eh, diba? That is 40%. So, meron tayong 39%, or should I say 40%, mas mababa sa apat yung dami ng pagkain sa isang araw. Okay? Yun po yung ibig sabihin na ito. Talaga, nakaka... Ah, lab, sa labas pala. Sa labas. Akala ko isang araw. Ang nakalagay dito, person eats out in a week. Ah, okay, gets na. So, hindi, 40% uh, of the population or the people, hindi sila kumakain ng apat na beses. No? Mas mababa sa apat na beses. Sa isang linggo, kumakain sila sa labas. Sa Jollibee, yan, paborito niya, di ba? Jollibee, Macdo, and so on. Jollibee, bakana na. Sure. <laughs> Ulitin ko ha, it's out in a week. Ito po yung ibig sabihin. Akala ko araw eh. Lama lang nagsasalita dyan na ma'am, mali pa. So, activities na yung sunod. And alam nyo na yan. I am sure alam na alam nyo na yan. So we are done with module number 10, 11, and 12. So next week, 13, 14, 15. Kaya lang wala tayong video lesson ng 14 and 15. Okay. Then sunod na doon ay yung 16, 17, 18. So last two weeks na lang tayo no, for the fourth quarter. And sana po no, lahat ng kailangan maipasa sa fourth quarter ay naipasa na. Okay? 
and siguro gusto ko sana no dun sa PT1 natin gawin ko sana ng iba kaya lang kasi kung may nagawa na yung karamihan uh, hindi naman natin pwedeng ibalik para lang gumawa sila ng panibago pero tatandaan nyo na 